Shalom Aleichem. Thank you for joining us today for our Musar class. If this is your first time, I say welcome to you, and I pray that you will have a great understanding of this three weeks that we are beginning today. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? So as we are preparing our hearts to begin this by beginning our fast today, we are at this time abasing ourselves so that our physical body may be um, having a little bit of torment already this morning. But what we're doing is we are trying to put the physical um, cravings to rest and to silence them so that our spiritual cravings can come forth and we can recognize them once again. You know, Hashem has given us a perfect uh, neshama, okay? Our soul that he created within us, as we know, is perfect. But what is happening to our soul? Why is it that it seems to be uh, non-existent? And it seems that our nefesh, the flesh, which is really, it's our emotions. It's our, it's, it comes from the mind, our own self-will and emotions are, are that carnal part of us, the flesh, we call it. Um, it begins to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and begins to take over our thoughts, our attributes, and changes our personality into one that is just selfish and one who cannot be um, satisfied with even the uh, physical things in life. Because if we uh, have allowed our nephish, our, our emotions to become greater than our spiritual self, then we have began um, a fall, as though it were. We have fallen into a darkness, and that is why we are not sensing our neshama, because we have covered up the light of our soul with the cravings of the flesh. And as we have learned, whatever we're feeding is what is going to grow. So if we've been feeding our um, neshama, our soul, and feeding, what does our soul uh, crave? And that is nothing more than the Torah, the word of God. And why does it crave the word of God? Because the word of God is what brings us close to Hashem. And that is what our our neshama, our soul longs for. It longs to be in the presence of Hashem. And as our um, picture depicts on on our lesson today is the Holy of Holies, the very Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies, where Hashem uh, resides. So what are we mourning? Are we actually mourning the temple? Are we mourning rather what was in the temple that we lost? And that is, of course, the presence of Hashem. And that is what we Jewish people are really mourning. It's not so much the temple, but yet it's what was in the temple. It was the divine presence of Hashem that was in the temple. And that is what we are mourning. But we have a little secret that maybe some may not know. And that is that until Mashiach comes to restore that temple, his presence among us, we have the ability to have that divinity within us. And that is, we then are the temple. And we have that ability to have Hashem's presence in us. That, as we might call it, the Holy of Holies within us. And so, as we are entering this three-week period, yes, it's a time of mourning. But what? we can look forward to the expectation is, is in that morning, we are actually expecting and looking forward to the end of the three weeks when Hashem's presence begins to really um, fill us and emanate from us. So as we get rid of all the darkness, it has clouded the presence of Hashem in our life by this three week period. We are actually 
allowing Hashem to clean up the mess that we've made so that his light can emanate from us. And is that what he wants us to be? He wants us to be a lapid, a light to the nations. But how can we be a light to the nations and fulfill our mission that we have been called to this earth to perform if we have become dull and dark and only self-seeking and therefore we can be of no use to the kingdom of Hashem. So it is very important that we take charge of this three weeks and only you, yourself, ourselves personally can do this. No one can do it for us. We have to be serious and gung-ho and with alacrity, with so much exuberance, looking forward to cleaning up this mess that we've been making and allowing the light of Hashem to shine forth from us. So we see some examples of the attribute in the Tanakh about how there's a washing of the sin and how we can become clean. It says this process of repair and purification is performed directly by Hashem. There is not an intermediary. There, it, it's, it is written this way, that forgiveness is with you, Hashem. Only you have the power to erase sin completely, to erase this sin that we have committed completely. Only Hashem has the power to do this. Uh, the Navi states that Hashem washes the filth of the daughters of Zion. Hashem washes the filth, right? This describes a situation after the destruction of the temple in which B'nai Israel endured terrible calamities, which atoned for their sins. Hashem cleansed them of even their worst sins, as Ezekiel has said, I shall sprinkle upon you pure waters. Hashem says, I alone will sprinkle upon you clean waters, pure waters, and I will purify you. What does this tell us? When Hashem sends the pure waters, which he cleanses those of us who have sinned against him, he is exhibiting his merciful attribute of he his mercy. It's his mercy. The mercy of God tells us that when we make a teshuva, that he himself will clean up the mess. He himself goes behind us and he cleans up all of the mess, all of the, the mistakes that we've made and all of the things that we have caused. He has to go behind us then and clean it all up. You know, there was an example in one of the books I was reading that, <clears throat> for instance, it, here's a mother who's preparing ferociously and fervently um, to prepare for um, Arab Shabbat. And many of you, mostly probably all of you know how how uh, the fever to get everything accomplished before the sun begins to set on Arab Shabbat on that Friday afternoon. Everything is just going quickly, quickly, quickly. And, and, and if there's children and others that are helping around the house, it just seems like we're almost stumbling over each other, trying to make sure that everything is ready and prepared uh, for, the, for our Arab to begin. And there's a little story about a mother who has just made this beautiful cake for Shabbat and it is sitting on the counter and it's already been iced and it's ready uh, for, the, for the dessert for Shabbat. And a little child, a little son, comes over and reaches up on the counter to, to touch it. And as he does, he accidentally tips it over and it ends up on the floor. Oi, what a mess. And oh, what are we going to do? I only have a couple of hours left. And so the mother <clears throat> has this, all of a sudden she's very frustrated and, and very confused. And what do I do? And what do I do? And immediately the little boy realizes the terrible mistake that he has made and what he has caused and the mess that he's caused. And it's all on the floor. And oi, now we have no dessert for, for Shabbos. And he's lamenting and he begins to cry and he asks his mother to please forgive me. I'm so sorry. What a terrible mistake and, and, and what a terrible thing I've done. And now his little Shabbat clothes are also, also dirty and has, you know, chocolate icing all, all over himself. But the mother sees that he's so lamenting. He is so sorrowful of what he's done, the mistake that he's made, that she immediately forgives him. 
And she says, it's okay. I will make an, another cake. All is well. We will have a great Shabbat. And I forgive you. You can stop your crying. Um, I, I, I completely forgive you. But what happens after that? Now mother has to go and and has to maybe not even, you know, do some of the other things that she's wanting to do to get ready for Shabbat because now she's got to start all over again. She's got to quickly try to make this cake and get this all better. And not only that, now she has to go and change his clothes and and take care of these clothes that, he, that he's soiled and, and try to wash them up quickly and, and get all of the stain out of them. And all of these things that the mother has to do, even though the child is forgiven, but he can't do these things for himself. Only the mother can make a new cake. Only the mother can wash the stains out of these clothes. Only the mother can give him a new start by forgiving him. And this is the way, it's, it's a little picture of how Hashem has to deal with us. So the first step to Teshuva is for us to regret. And why are we so regretting? Well, first of all, we're regretting our sins because the remorse of actually allowing the Yetzirah to lead us by his temptations to sin. And, you know, <clears throat> it is said in, in rabbinic literature that when we sin, that we cr actually create this evil angel, this Yetzirah, we, we, cre we create it that causes our demise, eventual demise. And so... It is the Yetzirah. It is the, the evil angel. And who is the evil angel? Hasatan, curse be he. So we must regret, first of all, that we have allowed the enemy of our souls to tempt us and lead us away into sin. And then what happens? When we sin, there's like this domino effect. We sin, we fall. And others around us, we tip them over and they fall. And it just goes on and on and on and on. So, you know, when we sin, it's not just about us. It is the sorrow and the failing of other people that we have uh, associated with. We cause them to stumble. So basically, the enemy has this little stumbling block. And if our nephish is uh, tainted, by our own selfish desires that we have allowed to overcome ourselves, then that becomes a stumbling block for us. And we take that. It's kind of like this bait, the bait of the Satan. And we were hungry for that. Why? Because the flesh has given over to evil inclinations. And therefore, this temptation, this bait, whatever it is, it's our weakness. That's what the Satan will use, the bait. And that weakness, he will dangle before us and we grab hold of that thing and there's always a hook. There's always a hook, right? And that hook gets a hold of us and it's only when we look at ourselves and we see how far we have fallen that we can then make that teshuva and Hashem helps us to get loosed from that hook that, that we grabbed hold of. And when that happens, there that teshuva begins to happen. We, we Hashem straightens us up and he helps us get back on the path from which we have fallen from. And then Hashem has to go about <laughs> cleaning up the mess that we have made, the others that we have harmed, the mess that we have left behind. Hashem has to clean that up. And one of the ways that Hashem cleans that up is that he uses us to go to others that maybe we have harmed and ask forgiveness of them as well, trying to make right the wrongs that we have committed. So first we have to judge ourselves. Some of the things that we judge ourselves for is just the lack of prayerlessness. Do you know that when we allow that spirit of prayerlessness to take hold of us and we stop having that communication every day with the shim, that Laziness takes hold of us. And the more the lazier we are, the lack of prayer just goes away. That feeling of loneliness that we have is something that we have done to ourselves. And then what happens is selfishness takes over. 
then we're trying to stir up things within us to try to get back to a shim. But it's that selfishness that will just sometimes we we will look for other things to soothe that feeling that we have that actually just something that it's like a little salve that we rub on ourselves and it really doesn't cleanse us, right? It doesn't really help. And then we can end up with doubt and unbelief because once we have disconnected ourselves with Hashem by not having fellowship with Him through prayer and the study of Torah and the, the working of our mitzvot, then that doubt and unbelief. Is God really here? I don't hear him. I don't see him. I don't sense him anywhere. And then that old doubt and amuna, uh, and lack of amuna will set in. So what we have to do is when we start feeling that little um, angst of, of guilt, that's a good thing. If we begin to have guilt, then we can have remorse. So remember, guilt, the feeling of guilt is a good thing. Do we just wallow in guilt? No. Guilt leads us to remorse. Remorse means that I am sorry. I am sorry, Hashem. I regret. Remorse and regret, they are a gift from Hashem. So it begins with the feeling of guilt. I've done something wrong. And then we can admit that to Hashem. I've done something wrong. Then we can have remorse and regret. Those are other gifts that Hashem has given us because if we have real remorse and real regret, then our teshuva will be sincere. And only with sincere teshuva can we really be restored. So wonderful that all the steps that Hashem has given us. So how do we begin? We first begin by recognizing how low we have fallen and how far away we are from Hashem. We have to tell Hashem, I know I've sinned. It's not just enough to regret our sin, but we realize that, you know, Hashem has put us and allowed us to be in a very um, regrettable situation, unpleasant situations. And that too is for our good. And that's why we can say when we see some, what we see unpleasant or bad things happening to us, we must say this too is for good. Because this, too, is going to make us recognize where we are, how far we've fallen, so that we can make true teshuva. We can feel remorse. Why are we having remorse? Because we can see how far that we have allowed the Yetzirah to bring us and lead us away from Hashem. So when we feel that first twinge of guilt, that's a good sign. That's a good start that our heart is actually waking up. Because if our heart is dead and covered up and become calloused, sometimes there are people that can never find their way back to a shim if they have not felt and listened to that first little urging of that first little twinge of guilt. So remember, if you have that first little twinge of guilt, immediately, immediately remember that's a shim. He's speaking to you. You're hearing the voice of a shim and he's saying, return, return home. He's calling to us return. So we don't ever ignore that feeling of guilt. It is a guilt. It is a sign from a shim that he's trying to wake us up, wake up sleepers, get out of your slumbering, get out of your laziness, return to a shim return. So, this is a time for us to listen and how we can listen. One of the things is by our, um, um, our fasting today, it helps us to kind of clean up our ears and get the wax out of our ears and begin to listen to Hashem because he's calling us. He's calling us to return. Um, in um, Seculos, we, we read that we have come before you creator of all spirits. Because of our sins, we are heavy with sighs. Evil decrees are abounding and our wailings are many. For on the 17th day of Tammuz, the tablets were broken. It's the tablets that were broken. Oh, doesn't your heart break to know that because of our sin, 
the tablets, the divine tablets of Hashem were broken because of our sin. This is why we are guilty. This is why we must feel remorse. Just imagine these beautiful sapphire tablets that had the divine writing of Hashem upon them. They were so magnificent. You could see them from both sides. No matter the direction that you would turn the tablets, they were clearly visible. The very word of God was clearly visible, visible upon them. The words of God were, as it were, floating upon the sapphire. It was beautiful. It was like a lake. It was a mirror. And when we look, we could look inside the those tablets and the mirror of Hashem was there and it and we became one with him and we could see him reflecting from us what a beautiful connection it was but because of our sin they were broken but Hashem has given us another opportunity he says you are my ark I want to establish my presence within you you are the divine tablets, and I want to write my word upon your heart. And we see in Ezekiel that he says, The time is coming, and is even now, that I will purify you. I will wash you with the water of my spirit. I will cleanse you, and I will write myself on the tablets of your heart so that you will be compelled to follow my commandments. What a beautiful thing we see that Hashem is going to write himself upon our heart. <laughs> and we once again have the opportunity to be completely connected with him. He in us and us in him, completely connected. What a divine thing this is going to be. And Hashem says that during this three weeks, it is possible. It is possible. And if we will take this three weeks to rectify ourselves, then we will see that Hashem is going to come down and he is going to manifest his presence in a huge way. And, and, as, and as Ava was mentioning on uh, our Lapid uh, chat this morning, that we have the opportunity to sense the very presence of Hashem in our physical flesh. And we even have the opportunity to even smell the presence of Hashem. And what is this, the fragrance of Hashem? Ghanadin. Oh, the field of sacred apples. This is what awaits us. This is what the, the time of Elul is all about, where the king is in the field, and we are in the field with Hashem. Oh, these days are days of glory. These are the days that are so important as we begin to break off the crust of the sins that we have committed to get, this is what breakthrough is all about. And you know, in the Torah, one of the attributes of Hashem is that he is the Lord. He is the God, the Lord of the breakthrough. So if you are needing a breakthrough in your life, know that in this three weeks, that if you will turn your heart home, <laughs> that you have the opportunity for the Lord of the breakthrough to break through the crustiness of our hearts. And it's that dam that's holding back the water of the washing of the word of the spirit that will come in like a gully washer and it will cleanse us all the way, all the way to the purification of our neshama. And what is it that's holding us back? It is the attributes. It is the divine spark in us that we have to rectify ourselves. So it is the, uh, the reason that we study Musar. What is Musar? But it is the balancing of our soul traits. The soul traits that Hashem has given us, these are divine and they are amazing. They're awesome. But we have to rectify them. We have to cleanse them ourselves. Only each of us are responsible for what Hashem has given us. So if there is an area in our life that pride has, has gotten out of control and we have have need of dialing it back to balance, which is what Musar is about, balancing and bringing back our attributes, our soul traits. 
into balance. So pride, sometimes it gets out of balance, right? And that's where humility, we have to balance it back and have this humility that Hashem wants us to have. And so let's humble ourselves. Let's humble ourselves in these three weeks. And how do we do it? Prayer, fasting, studying Hashem's word, understanding what he's individually calling us to do, looking deep inside ourselves and asking Hashem, if there is any sin within us, if there is anything that is keeping us from being completely connected to Hashem, let's ask his divine spirit to reveal these things to us in these three weeks. We <clears throat> remember that when we set our heart on cleansing us from our <laughs> on teshuva, that Hashem himself sees our tears. And with those tears, they, those tears are coming from our heart. And, you know, we're told that the gates of teshuva, the gates of tears are always open. So when we are ready to make teshuva, we have that divine connection to Hashem. If there is a tear of remorse, that that opens the gate to return to Hashem. So if you're feeling that remorse, you have that divine gift that God has given you to have a feeling of guilt. This is amazing. This is your first call. Okay. Recognize that is your first call to shoot to 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 to, 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 to making that return back to Hashem and allow the gates of tears to open up and let the Lord of the breakthrough come in and wash us clean. Get through this old hard crust that we've allowed to build up upon ourselves and allow the gates of Teshuvah. He said he's going to wash us with pure waters and it begins with the salty tears. And this is why it tells us that that um, sincere teshuva, confessing our sins to Hashem, opens up the full contrition that our tears awaken His pure waters. So it's it's how that it begins with the with below, right? So Kabbalistic it says when a person sets our heart on cleansing a. Uh, cleansing our sins and repentance in sincere teshuva, confessing them before Hashem with tearful contrition, his tears awaken the pure waters in heaven, which descends to wash the stains that are left behind by our sin. Remember, our sins cause stains, stains that are left behind. This follows a basic Kabbalistic uh, concept that an awaking below engenders a corresponding awakening from above. So as we begin to break up the fallow ground, that hard crust, as we begin to break that up through remorse, through true teshuva, for repentance, then it awakens the waters from above. And what happens is the waters, it is though the heavens open up and the waters of Hashem come down and it begins to wash away everything. And he forgives us as far as the east is from the west. It's an eternal, everlasting forgiveness from the sins of the past. And that deluge of rain from heaven begins to cleanse us of all of our sins. And then Hashem goes about cleaning up the mess that we have made. And this is enough for us to want to make teshuva, just knowing that we've made a mess and it's a mess that only Hashem can clean up. So we are, in essence, causing the Ruach HaKodesh, Hashem himself, to have to go and clean up filthiness that we have left behind. That should break our heart, that we are causing Hashem to have to go behind us and clean up a filthy mess. So teshuva means that we are going to determine within our heart of hearts that we are going to turn away from the sinfulness of the past and we are not going to go back to it. We are not going to go back to any of the filthiness that we have left behind, but we are going to get on the path of Torah and we are become 
becoming that shining light that Hashem wants us to be, that diamond in the rough, so that we can truly be the lapid that Hashem wants us to be, the torch, a light to the nations. We cannot fulfill the purpose that we have been given upon this earth to be the lapid and the light to the nations if we don't turn from the filthiness of our sins and allow Hashem to cleanse us from those sins and be the beacon that he's called us to be. Oh, these are exciting times. We have right now the opportunity to begin the turning, to begin the turning away from that past, from that sin that was just from yesterday. Oh, <laughs> we have a chance for a do-over. This is so exciting, Hashem. If you are feeling that twinge right now, that inkling of remorse, that inkling of, of guilt, that's amazing. That means that Hashem is calling you. He's saying, this is your opportunity. If you'll just come back, if you'll just turn from it, I'm waiting with open arms to cleanse you of all of your filth, of all of your unrighteousness. And I'm going to renew my tablets within you. You are my sapphire tablet. It's right here. It's your soul. It is the renewed tablets. You are pure sapphire. I'm going to make you see through clear. There's not going to be a spot or a wrinkle in you. Oh, Baruch Hashem. And only God can do that. If we just give him everything, then he will give us everything in return. And we will be renewed and we will be refreshed. So if you are that deer that is panning for that water, Hashem says, I am that rock. Oh, Messiah Yeshua is the rock that followed us in the wilderness. He is the rock Whew, that we can get in the cliff of that rock where the divine presence dwells. I encourage you today, look forward with expectation for these next three weeks. Cling to Hashem. Remember that you are alive today. All of us that cling to Hashem, you are alive today. Hashem Yeshua, I look forward to being with you again next week as we are refining our character traits and become brighter and brighter as the noonday.